G'day and welcome to the Leg Up podcast. I'm Blake Johnston. That's Pat Allendorf. And uh, Woodhead's not here this week, Pat. <laughs> Mate, that is a gun intro. I know you practiced probably 30 or 40 times on me before that went out. <laughs> But what an intro. Who Thanks, needs mate. Woodhead? No, I don't Who know. needs him? I don't know. He's, he'll be hoping we uh, crash and burn tonight. But the big fella's at Noosa. He texted me, break a leg. That's it. Break a leg. Does that mean uh, get started? Or he's, he's hoping we crash and burn. He, he wants to get his spot back. Yeah, do you know what? I threw out a few names to bring on the show. Your Hildos, your DJCs, your Bjorn Bakers. Your, threw, on, threw out a few big racing names. And Woodhead said, no, nah, I'd prefer if you just didn't try and replace me. Yep, well, we had DJC on the uh, the weigh-in on Monday night, so he'll be feeling the pressure, old Woodhead. I oh, know, DJ, he, you couldn't ask him. If you got DJC tonight, you would have had to pay him overtime this week doing Monday, Friday, and then Wednesday as well. So it was a full-time job, just about a full-time job for DJC. But, um, but how good was last what, weekend? Well, before we get into last weekend, literally what Woodhead has done right now in going to Noosa um, this week, Derby weekend, Melbourne Cup coming up. This would fucking dead set be like Santa Claus or one of your shopping centre Santa Clauses taking holidays in December. Could he have picked a worse time? <laughs> I don't know. I would say only like the lead up to the slipper maybe around that yeah, start maybe. of April, a bit of an Easter holiday or something. Yeah, maybe around that Easter time, the autumn carnival, right dead set in the middle. Couldn't have picked a worse time. But we will be doing a podcast on – he's back for a podcast on Sunday leading into the uh, – the Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. Beauty. I do remember previewing last year's Melbourne Cup with the lads and uh, I remember giving Twilight Payment an absolute spray, saying it was a uh, should End be a time at home. So <laughs> well, let's hope we can go a little bit better this year, eh? Oh, mate, it's only, it's only up. It's only up. I can only go up from last year. Yeah, well, I'm not sure that I found the winner last year. I'm not even – oh, I was on Surprise Baby. I was on Surprise Baby to win a fortune last year. You were, you are. I remember that. You kept about $100 on it every week until the cup. I was heavily but invested. I, I was nervous. I had sweaty palms leading into the cup last year. I got, I got real confident late too because there was a real good push for him late. But he went yeah, awful. Knees weak. Knees weak, palms are sweaty. Mom's yep. spaghetti. Yep, Eminem. Yep, reciting Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's recap last weekend. It was a good one. Oh, bro. I, this is like, that Cox plate, kill my life, please. Yeah, well, you, me, and Woody took a multi. Uh, Halal, you got Halal up. And then Woodhead headed to Doombin with Sir Warwick. And then the last leg was riding on the Cox Plate decision because we were on Enemo. I think it was about 40 to 1. Even Peter Volandis couldn't save that one. The protest going into the bloody, um, what was the big race in Sydney? The, the, the ice bar. The bathrooms. invitation. The invitation. Yeah. There was uh, even Peter Volandis couldn't control that. Half an hour protest. You thought they just deliberated for ages. You know, maybe they would side with the Aussies as opposed to the uh, the overseas Raiders, even though the overseas Raiders have whinged their way into the races the, about the scans, about the they fly first class here and everything and still want to whinge. And um, they get protests like that. They've got to be happy. Well, let's talk about it. it upheld or dismissed, I in your opinion? Any- Anyone that's coming out and saying that that shouldn't be upheld is a fence sitter because when they brush like that, 100 out, there is no way when they come short half head that it shouldn't be upheld. It got me animated. Um, I thought I thought it was the one of the weakest decisions I've seen in racing. Like if, if that isn't easily upheld, I don't know what is because Enemo got to him copped a bump, lost a little bit. He might have lost a neck. Uh, and then he came back and he was in front past the line. And those people that are saying that it, it, past the post doesn't count, it, it does count because uh, it, it proves that uh, state of rest wasn't holding NMO on the line. William William's ip, whip action was impeded. So uh, there was at least three or four strides that he, he couldn't, uh, hit the horses he would have liked. And he was inside that last 100 metres, which uh, there's no rules on on whip. Uh, and he was pushed into the worst part of the track. So if that doesn't cost him the beaten margin, I'll give up. And all valid points, all of those valid points, and the people that come out and say that uh, did the interference cost at the race, 
Yeah, I understand that you're asking, you know, did did the brush cost the race? I'm asking a different question. Should it have to deal with that interference? I agree. And there's which is no. I it's think flat out no. I think the horse that that cops the interference, that makes the protest, that lodges the protest, is the one that's disadvantaged in a protest because like I think at this stage, stewards, if it's 50-50, they let the they, they let the decision stand. But if it's 50-50, it should go the other way because the other horse was disadvantaged. It did nothing wrong. It's like in footy, you got to cop a penalty for for doing something wrong in a race. That's right. And that, but they do also say that horses touch lots of times throughout the race. But we're talking about that last 200 meters where momentum is the key, key, key figure in the entire race. You've done everything for your horse to that point to get the right amount of momentum to obviously finish first past the post. That, whether it's a small brush, one whip obstruction, getting forced into inferior ground, like should you have two massive uh, wrongs to make the right? Should you have, do two massive things need to happen? Like I feel like one of them alone is enough for that protest to be upheld. And yeah, I thought it was pretty gutless that it wasn't. And yeah, it is what it is. I guess everyone had to wear it. And, uh, you know, the Saratoga Derby becomes a lead-up race for the Cox Plate now, I guess. Yeah, and, uh, like, everybody in Australia would have been rooting for that to be upheld as well. They would have been they would have been well, mate, public heroes of Australia. Well, throw the form book out the window. That thing, the thing in the photo with it was a, is a three-year-old, technically. It should be carrying 49 kilos, 49 and a half kilos. It carried the 57 you know, it still got home first, even with that little bit of obstruction. You know, the form book, just confetti. How I'll be, like? I'll be interested to see the McKinnon because uh, those sort of the NMO, the state of rest, uh, and very elegant are going to most probably meet again. So I'll, I'll be interested to see if that comes up a dry deck and and see. Well, if, I'll tell you um, what, whichever god. Um, Oh, what's his name? O'Brien. The Joseph O'Brien prays to. Far out. Can I get on his page? Because the run it had in the Saratoga Derby was absolutely <laughs> Moses parting the Red Seas. It, he just got out of nowhere, tracked in, bang, straight to the front. Easy. The run he got in the Cox Plate, unbelievable. Like, do you know what? Damien Lane probably went and watched that um, footage like, like Ace Ventura watching the laces out one. I know that you have beef with Damien Lane, so so get it off your chest. Well, do you know what? I've got a I've got a new nickname for Damien Lane. It's outside lane. I don't know how if if I jumped four lengths last on a horse, two lengths last on a horse, one length last, half a length last on a horse, and was riding a horse out of position, the last thing I'll be thinking is I'm going to circle every runner in this field and win this race. Watch this. Hey, watch this. Hold my whip. I do. I do think that the ride, the ride was the difference there, Animo, because I don't think Animo was. Go, I didn't think Animo was going all that well leading up to the corner. I don't think he was travelling all that well, and Williams was at him, and that's why I reckon Williams cut the corner because he didn't think the horse was going well enough to go around him and win. Lane thought he was the winner, so he could go to the outside. He could cut that. He could take that extra ground and, and pick him up, but. The, the ride on the first two were just too good for it. Mate, what about what about earlier in the prep when Very Elegant cuts back to the inside and puts a length on Riadini in the last 100 metres? It's like it doesn't, it doesn't need to get to the outside. All it needs is running room, getting its momentum. And I feel like it could have got that going back to the inside and found it. But do you know what? Damien Lane chose to go to the outside. The horse jumped poorly. I Yeah, I can't believe it. Like... Oh. He's in my book, Damien Lane is very, he would not be one of the jockeys I'd be backing going forwards. I think um, they're going to make a decision on Melbourne Cup tomorrow with her. What would you be doing? I would be saying 1000% yes. J Max horse has just scratched. Welcome back. Open arms. Come here, Jazz. I missed you, bro. <laughs> Mate, I missed you. I'm, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Both of them, James would be like, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I took the ride on Zaki. Chris would be like, no, I'm sorry that I let you take the ride on Zaki. You know, I am, you only do what I let you do. It'd be a good story. 
Mate, I'd love to be there with the camera when he breaks the news. James. I'll, I'll definitely, I definitely think she's got a chance in the Melbourne Cup. I'm not sure what weight she's got. Mate, but... did you watch, if you watched the replay of last year's Cup, it it was literally like the Cox Plate ride. It was close to last on the turn, came around every horse and was flashing, absolutely motoring at the end to the point where I think it ran itself into fifth. Yeah, she she wasn't being, I was just going to go back through her, her, oh, she runs seventh. She runs seventh. Seventh. She's only beaten section, four lengths. For your sectional men, she was flying at the end. So with a better run, a bit closer, like it was very un J Mac esque. The ride well, it was over in the, it was it was Mark Zara. So it was, oh, was very, it? very un J Mac esque. Well, that was definitely something that J Mac wouldn't do. <laughs> but, well, she drew 15. So I'd be going around for sure because if she draws one to 10 and, and can settle in the first 10. She drew 15. So she had to go back to 19th. Um, well, for those, for those peanuts out there that have been commenting on Facebook saying, it's a go back horse. It's a go back and run on horse. It's first start this prep, posit up fourth. It's second start this prep, posit up fourth. It's third start this prep. Where do you reckon it posit up? 10th. Uh, fourth. Eighth. Fourth. Where to posit up? <laughs> I was up seventh in the in the Cox Plate. In no, the Cox Plate, peanuts, fourth up. Some of these peanuts on Facebook have been saying she's she's a go back horse. She's a go back and run on horse, mate. She's a posse up horse. She can just sit in there just behind him, and then let go. Like yeah, hundred percent. When she draws the gate, she's thereabouts. Yeah, and I reckon I reckon Twilight Payment will have a hard on this year and be running them along, running them right along. So. Well, I tell you, Incentivise will be running them along as well. So it's going to be a, a strong speed. And if she can... But I think what Incentivise proved in the Caulfield Cup was that it can sit off them. So it will be happy to let that... If they go a frantic pace, it won't want to get involved in that. Oh. No, it, they won't be getting... They won't get involved in a frantic pace, but he'll he'll clap on the pressure from the 800 regardless of the speed because he's just got an engine, that horse. Fair, fair. I'm excited but to that's, see mate, that, that's that's Sunday's conversation. And if we get a bit of rain, it should be a huge chance. But we'll move on. Uh, Sydney, what did you make of the inaugural running of the uh, Invitation Ice Bath? She was good. She was great. The least slowest horse won and Ice Bath got there. It was a pretty ordinary field. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I know geez. I know that you gave Tommy Berry a bit of a bake on, on Trivier, but I want to give him a wrap. I thought it was nearly, nearly... The perfect ride. Nearly the yeah, perfect so. ride. Because it was grand final day. He drew ordinary. Um, he drew maybe 10 or 11. He drew double figure barrier. Um, and it could have been very easy for him to just snag her out the back um, and be seven to 10 lengths off him. But instead, on grand final day, a $2 million race, he's given her a kick up. He's given her a kick in the guts. He's He's tried to put her into a spot. He almost found 1-1 one, one from 11, except Rocker Clock kicked up inside him uh, and copped him three deep. So he nearly found the perfect spot. And then he's he's jumped out outside the leader, which is not ideal. Probably cost her running clear second because she's vulnerable at 1,400 metres anyway. But it was nearly the perfect ride. And on grand final day, I would much prefer him to be positive like that then be negative and then be out the back. Fair, where'd she run? Fourth. Fourth. So she's stuck on well. Yeah, but never, when they turn in the straight, never a hope. No, no. The winner was too good. And she'll go around the in the <laughs> Cantala this week. The winner was too good, but this is, that's how weak a race that was. That's embarrassing. The amount of money that was on offer for that race and the fact that Ice Bath could just sit out the back one length off them, circle the entire field and beat them by two lengths is... On a good track, I still, I'm still not convinced that Ice Bath is a good tracker. It's a good horse. I still think it's a wet tracker, and I just think that field was that poor. That, and yeah, a horse like Star Tontes got to the outside, let down for a 200 meter sprint. Looked like it was going to run on a run last by panel. So I think she actually pulled up lame Star Tontes, two out of five, five lame or something like that. But Did it? Um, I, I agree. One out of five run. They would have, they would have got the same field for 750. Maybe they, wouldn't have, got, maybe they wouldn't have got Ice Bath. Maybe they wouldn't have got the winner. But um, she was good. She was good. And I give her a hope this weekend, but we'll get on to that later. I, I'm going to give, like, I reckon it's 
it's not great for Sydney racing that we've got a 10 race card. We get a 10 race card every Saturday. We had a 10 race card uh, this Saturday. Um, and previously the week before they, they split a benchmark 78 and they pinned the, the two year old race. So they, they could have had 11 races today at Canterbury. You see how many races we had there? We had six races. Do you think? Although they were, although they were basketball games. It's six races with five horse fields. Awful, awful. It's surely that the midway or I'm not going to say the highway because it's good for, for country trainers and country owners to get to metropolitan races. But I think the midway needs to go to Canterbury on a Wednesday, not Canterbury on a Wednesday, midweek racing Wednesday, because we get seven race. We get seven races max. We never get eight races. So when we do have seven races, we can have eight and we, we no longer have six races. That's just poor because we had the Bendigo cup today as well. And the, the Sydney meeting to coincide with it is a six race card at Canterbury with small fields. With five and six horse fields, no third dividends. It's yeah, it's not really, a, it's the opposite to a punter's paradise. And if you like going on a holiday to, um, geez, who can I not offend here? Who can I offend the least here? Uh, oh, no, I, won't, I won't say anywhere. I don't want to offend no. you. <laughs> Bali? <laughs> like, oh, Jesus, Blake. Yeah, uh, you like going to Bali. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't been on a holiday for a while. Last holiday I went on was Thailand. Like it was like pretty good. Holiday to it's Russia. like Bali and Thailand are on the same. Uh, no, Russia. but like, yeah, yeah I, I sort of think for a oh yes, Wednesday racing, midweek city racing. How good is this? Oh, there's five in this field. Oh, beauty. It's nearly a no place pays. It should uh, it should be easy to find the winner, but apparently not. But um, do we, where are we going to get stuck into this weekend first? We going to Flemington or we going Don't rush to me, bro? Who are you going to leg up first? Oh, geez, I'm, I'm not hosting very well tonight. We actually went through what we were going to do tonight, and you mentioned nothing about letting anybody up. I just want to pizzle you as the host. One day I'll be host. It's a dream of mine. <laughs> well, let's be co-hosts. Um, who am I legging up this weekend? I'm going to leg up Tommy Berry for his ride on, on Trivier on grand final day. You just put him into the race. And his ride today, I'll tell you what, he beat me today. I had a bet on, um, I had a bet on Boudoir, Boudoir. It's, I had a, yeah, I had a crack at Boudoir today, about $6. Firmed into about four forty. I knew I was in trouble when the money kept coming for Ruben Moss because uh, he was, he, I think he was, I think he was uh, 300 days between runs or something along those lines. Um, but the right beat me. Chris Waller. Oh, he uh, loves a good 300 day between runs. Oh, the, the right, off one trial too. I just got to have a look. Um, I'm just going to load, load Canterbury up today. Um, from what I remember, Ruben Moss. No, he was, sorry. It was 135 days between runs. Speed legend was 623 days between runs, but Ruben Moss, I thought he was vulnerable because uh, 1,250 metres, short of his best, he was, he was first up off one trial. Tommy, the money comes, I think he was 320 into 225. Tommy just gives him a kick out of the guts. That, that was the thing that we were going to beat him because he was going to be out the back and he was going to be running on. But Tommy kicks him up out of the guts, kicks him in the guts, puts him into a spot. He starts to over-race. Puts him outside Boudoir and he's too good in the run home. We beat the, sec the third horse by two lengths, but he's just too good, Tommy, at the moment. With James that in makes, Melbourne anyway. Makes you crook when you beat the field by a long way to second. Yeah, you just find one better. Well, mate, my leg up of the week is a dis leg up of the week. And it's Damien Lane. He's someone that I would never put on a horse of mine now. Um, Outside lane is just is barred for me. So sorry to bring a negative into the leg up, uh, the legging up of jockeys this week, but that's my warning. I'm saying that those Japanese horses must have been good for him to be winning Cox Plates and Caulfield Cups on them. You're legging him down. I'm legging him down. Like 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 Rousseau. Jeez, I think know, you I backed must... her that day, didn't you? I did. You would have been legging him up that week. Like so do you know what? They must have been bloody good horses, I'll tell you what. <laughs> uh, poor old Damien Lane poor Damien old outside Lane. Lane for anyone that knows him out there just reach out and tell him that I think he gave very elegant an absolute bake tell him we've potted him and we've we've took him off very elegant in the Melbourne Cup I'm not sure if he's got another ride anyway but alright co-host what are we doing now where are we heading 
I reckon we head to Sydney and then we uh, cruise on down to Melbourne for a massive derby day where All I right. would just absolutely love to be. And I'm sure the leg up will uh, will get us there. Yeah, we'll next soon. year. I think next year. Oh, derby day, mate. Throw the black and white suit on. I've never That's been to derby day. Get your good Beetlejuice suit on. How, what days of the Flemington Carnival have you been to? You have been the car? I've been to all of them. Have you? I once, I once did a footy trip down there that included Ladies Day. So I went from Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Well, I've been to, I've, I've only, the only race meeting that I've been to on no, yeah, I haven't been to Emirates. I've only been to I've the been. Emirates Stakes. That's the only one that I've been to. I haven't to. been to the Emirates. <laughs> it's not even called the Emirates anymore, is it? Or is it? No. Oh, no. No, it's not anymore. Do you know what, what, I, have, what I haven't been to? I haven't been to the Caulfield Cup. I haven't been to the Caulfield Cup either. I've been to Caulfield once. I went to the Thousand Guineas. I told you that last no time. podcast. <laughs> well, I have no intention to go to Caulfield. I hate Caulfield. I, I think it's an awful track. You've been to the Cox Plate? Been to about three or four of them. Yeah. I, I, I went. The, been up in the members. I, I went to the infield once to a marquee in the infield. It was like a festival. It was, uh, it was pretty nuts. I've been to two. Going to the Mooney Valley, it's like going to Wyong. Wow. <laughs> like it, no, it's such a... It's <laughs> You're such so a close small, to the track, yeah. So close to the track that, like, you think because it's a co- the Cox Plate that the facilities there would be, like, astronomical. But it's, like, it's just super, I don't know, homely, like, tight and everything's so close to each other. But you literally reach out and pat a horse. I reckon I went... I reckon I went with... El Segundo won in 2007. I was there when, uh, when Seamus so you Award think? won. Seamus Award. I actually, I actually um, I had a good result on on that Seamus Award race. Um, when did he Seamus win? Seamus Award on you. Seamus Award. This, who ran second to him that year? Happy Trails. Know, yeah, I'll tell you the story. I'll tell you the story. Um, I had a good result on Happy Trails running second because... Oh, I need to get him up um, because I was at home one day and I was minding my own business, watching the races. And I got a phone call off my cousin, Adam, uh, and he was working at can you. Do the, can you do the phone call? I'll hey, cuz. Yeah. Okay. I'll do the phone call. I just gotta get him up. I gotta get. I gotta get what exact day I thought, it was. I, was. I thought you were gonna say I was watching Sister Act, and I started singing, "Oh happy trails, oh happy oh. trails, oh happy trails." Okay, this is the story. Okay, so I it's the fifth of October in uh, twenty thirteen, and I'm sitting at home. Uh, watching the races. It's Turnbull Stakes Day. And they've just crossed the line in the Turnbull Stakes and Happy Trails has won. So I get a phone call saying, Cuz, Cuz. Hey, Cuz. Cuz, can you, can you get down the pub? The, it was so, bloody Michael Walker. Can you get down? Cuzzy, can you get down to the pub? And I'm like, yep, yep. What's going, what's going on? What's going on? So the TAB had turned Seamus Award off he was like a hundred to one into oh, he was a hundred to one into like $15 or something like that in the Cox plate. All right. But they forgot to turn the place price off. So I've gone down to the I pub this, and I was just like feeding the, uh, the terminal. It was 15 to win and 17 to play. So I was feeding the terminal, these $50 notes. And I ended up getting about three or 400 on him before they turned him off. So it's a good result. Shit. What Which a result. A, a completely the wrong price. And he and he ran second to Seamus Award. He ended Shit. up paying twelve dollars the win. So he would have been about three dollars the play. So I took seven. Speaking of big prices, speaking of big prices and stupid phone calls, what about Tony Gollan ringing you last week with Jonka for the Manicano? Oh, what about TG coming to the party last week? TG, God, goodness me. I've sent him a bottle of penfolds. He did? He deserves yeah. it. He'll probably be. He'll probably. He usually gives me a buzz about this time uh, each and every week. So expect to hear from him. After Damien Lane slaughtered very elegant, I had to ask him if you could send it back. Send the the penfolds back. Yeah, I needed money. Yeah, well, 
TG. Uh, poor old outside Again. lane. TG, TG would have opened it already. He would have been he would have been stuck into it. He would have oh, been do you know what? three, good three glasses down. Jonka was an ex Waller horse, wasn't it? No. No. Um so, I thought it was an ex Waller sent to Brizzy. <laughs> no, he was he was in Sydney, but he, I don't think he was with um Waller. I'll just get it up. Uh who he was with. Um, but he always had ability, but he was just like oh, he was with David Atkins. Oh, Tony Gollum's improved. Close. <laughs> improved him about Atkins 100 yards. I was close in the alphabet. No. David Atkins, Chris Waller. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, close enough. Atco. You got Sydney's Premier Trader. Was it Atco? <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's a genuine Group 1 horse now. Genuine Group yeah. 1 horse. Probably. Do you, know what, do you know what isn't a genuine Group 1 race now? The Manicato. The Manicato. Oh, what do you reckon? Uh, what do you reckon? D Lane would have done on Jonker. Do you reckon he, he would have wrote, found that? He would have wrote it last. He would have wrote it last. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Fuck! I wish someone would just tell him that there's a cutaway rail. Maybe he would just stay on the inside. There's no such thing in in the outside lanes uh, playbook. Uh, co-host, are we ready to do the races or what? Yeah, mate. Let's rip into them. We've uh, we've had a bit of bat back patting. Oh, our three-leg multi nearly got up. We've already said that. We mentioned our that. Rollover, our rollover bet nearly got up to. So um, I'm not sure if Sam sent through the rollover bet um, or not. You know what? Whatever rollover bet he sent through, maybe we should brush it and go our own because he's not here. Yeah, well, Santa, Cla- Santa Claus has taken the week before Christmas off. I think we uh, we should do our multi as the rollover. Our multi as the roller to kick it off. To kick it off. Yeah. Actually, do you know what? It's actually not a bad idea to wait until we get a three legger up and then kick the rollover off from that. Because geez, it seems from that fifty dollars, it seems a it's, long it's way a to slow um, start. We nearly got it last week. It would have been up to seventeen hundred already or something, two thousand maybe. Yeah, I know. Let's, but we'll get it home this week. He did send something through. He said has to be in the Congo in the Coolmore. He would be drunk by now though. <laughs> yeah, he would have had too many gin and tonics. So, uh, what we'll, about that? We'll dismiss seems, that. We'll pretend we didn't uh, see it. It seems so far from that initial fifty to Woodhead losing three thousand dollars on Zaki. I know, I know. It, it's a lot of work goes in. I don't, I'm not sure if Woodhead um, understands how much work goes in to getting it up to three and a half thousand. Someone always with seems his, to lose it. Someone with as much money as him, it just—it's easy. I know he wipes his ass with hundred dollar notes. <laughs> but just uh, for a guy, for a guy that can stop, he would stop time. He could stop time sometimes. Well, two big, big bets, two big bets on two short price favourites in a period of what two months? He, he stopped Zaki the jumbo jet. Nothing was stopping Zaki, mate. Tab had paid out. Whoever sports bet had paid out on it. I think that was Tab actually. I think you were right the first time. Sports better yeah. paid out on incentivizer to win the Melbourne Cup, so we'll see that how that plays out for them. I'm going to get Woodhead to tip something like um, that: the government will raise taxes, thousand percent tax drop. Tax drop would be nice. <laughs> yep, do that for us, Woodhead. Uh, all right, Rose Hill Gardens, Golden Eagle, fifteen hundred meters, four-year-old set weights. We don't have any. This is the only four-year-old race in Australia. Seven and a half really? million dollars. Well, there might be um, there might be some four-year-old benchmark races, but this is the only four-year-old black type race in Australia. I don't even think it's a black type race, but um, it will be. It's worth seven and a half million. I was about to say it's bloody black type. If you win it, you don't care what type it is. That's seven and a half million cash. The check. I know, I know, and it's this is a good field, a very good field. I don't know what to make I of think- the, the internationals, but geez. Some good four-year-olds here. i got to say this is a brilliant field assembled. I can't believe. I guess this four-year-old field shows the, uh, I think, not only highlights how weak the crop of three-year-olds is this year, but shows that last year's three-year-olds are probably a lot higher standard than um, than this year's with what fuck, I'm thunderstruck, private eye have come out and done. Even Apache Chase in Brisbane, like XO Boom comes out and wins last week. There's just so much depth to this four-year-old clan going around here that it, where do you look? It's a good race. Like this is literally, I'll throw it out there. Similar, the form, doing the form on this race is similar to doing the form on a highway. They're all, they're literally all coming from totally different areas, races, like 
it's such a big field. There's, yeah, the form lines are so hard to line up. Overseas horses, Brisbane form, Melbourne form, Sydney Group 1, Epsom form. Like, where, where do you go, Blakey? Ah, oh, it's tough. Like, even if you look at Maximal, do you know he's a three-quarter brother to Frankel? I do know that. And, well, mate, I'll throw it out there straight away that I've definitely thrown it in as the outsider. Got to have something on it at $15. It has run behind Bae, who is a brilliant horse. So, yeah, that, you can't rule out form like that, uh, especially with what the overseas horses have been coming here and doing. I know that this is only over the 1,500 metres and they more dominate the uh, the middle distance to long distance races, but far out. Three-quarter to Frankel. Goodness me, that is... Uh, well, he wouldn't be here some, for nothing. He wouldn't be here for that's nothing. some bloodline. He's going he's gonna to need a good ride by Alicia from Barrier 22. I'm not sure where he gets to. I've got... I know nothing about this horse. Nothing. No trials. No trials here. It's yeah, it's tough to line them up, but but still breeding alone, and also I see a Scander Racing and Breeding is in there. That's a formerly Zoo Star owners. Ah, uh, sorry, not Zoo Star. Um, tell me the horse, Blakey Zoo Scander. Oh, Zoo Wallace Zoo horse. Star. That was the one that the the uh, Golden Rose. No, Zoo what Star. Was the, uh... Wasn't it Zoo Star? No, but who was a sire? The sire was. Uh... Zoo, I'll think of it after. No idea, but Neil where it's got a, a share in it too. Who's uh black caviar? Neil where it's got a share in everything. <laughs> yeah. well, He's got some good ones. But yeah, eight starts, only one win, plenty of placings against some nice horses, it's nice overseas horses. It's super hard to line up. This is our plum distance, the the just less than a mile. So we're a mile and less. I don't know. I've got to, I've got to have something on it at fifteen dollars. I can't let it go around. The other two, I'm quite happy to scratch. I uh, I was up late at night. I was going through the form of uh, where is Annabelle Nation's horses. I do think you were thinking of Zusta. No, he no, he no, won no, a Golden Rose. Thinking. He won a Coolmore. He's a very good horse, and Chris Waller trained him. And went to be went on to be a side. Yeah, I am thinking of Zusta. And, and the pumper right. rode him in the uh, the Golden Rose. I am thinking of Zusta. Zusta, That's yeah, he was a good horse. Yep, go on. Annabelle Nation, I think you've mentioned. Yeah, the uh, her overseas horse is... Le, Law of Indices. Reeve de Vol. Reeve de Vol. Mate, I stayed up and watched that Patrick Sarsfield win. I mean, not win the other day. It ran hopeless. And uh, I see that it's run behind it over a much more distant, quite a bit of rule it out um, for this race. Although it's just so hard to line up. I don't know, Blakey, you told me last week to put a line through the overseas horses and uh, all I want to do is back gold trip up here this weekend now. Did I tell you to put a line through the overseas horses? You said you gave me the too hard to line up. Oh, I just, sometimes I do just pen them, but um, it's not a good idea because if you if you backed all the internationals over the, the Flemington Carnival, Carnival uh, you'd be well in front, like, because... The return on the on investment, yes, it's it's really good. So we can't put the the pen through them. The horse that, like the international that I'd be keeping very safe here is the same one as you, Maximal. I think he, I think he's a very good horse. Um, Alicia from twenty two. It's going to be tough, but geez, I, I, I'm not sure how to line him up, and I wouldn't want to leave him out of my quaddy. No way. That's right. But who do you have on top? Who's your on topper? I, I'm, I'm with Apache Chase uh, just because I think this race sets up for him perfectly. Like, I don't think there's much between the top three in the market um, in regards to Private Eye, Thunderst I'm Thunderstruck and Apache Chase. Um, Private Eye's had a grand final already. He's an Epsom. Uh, and not that this is a second thought, but he's already peaked once. He's got to come back to 1,500 metres, which is... I mean, he can do that. He's, he hasn't drawn perfectly either. He's going to get well back from 17 and he can win. But I just don't think the setup is as good for him. I'm Thunderstruck. He's only in his second preparation. He's been out for a while. He should have won the Rupert Clark. He won the two rack. Now he comes to Sydney uh, for a $7.5 million race. I think this is probably an afterthought. 
I'm not saying that he can't win. He can definitely win and he's in my top three picks, but I would be... Uh, the other horse, I just think this is his race. Uh, this is the race that they've had in mind for him all along. He won the Wheatwood at Toowoomba. Uh, then he went out at Eagle Farm and he beat Emerald Kingdom. That was a really fast rate race. He sp- sat on a hot speed and he sprinted off it. Uh, he sets up perfectly from barrier six. I think he can be right on the speed. Uh, he's got form around Private Eye from last preparation. He actually beat Ayrton in the Fred Best. Uh, and then they run him in a Stradbroke. He's come back even better. He's won over 1,500 metres. I think he's going to be right there in the finish. I'm not saying that he's a good thing or anything, but he's he's going to be there when the whips are cracking. Blackie, I had a look at him, and I, I, I thought the price was a bit under after Emerald Kingdom. It's last of last against Exoboom last Yeah, week. he went no good, Emerald Kingdom, but he was... Really well liked by the market as well. He was like three dollars twenty into two twenty or something like that. So he ran last. So it was too bad to be true. Last of last. Last of last. I think he pulled up sore too. Or he might have pulled up with a slow recovery. Yeah, slow recovery. I made. I'm just looking at your tip. I, I did have a quite a good look at Apache Chase and. Uh, I just saw the form that uh, Private Eyes had its measure before. I know it was over a, a fractionally longer distance, but I think the um, the drop back in distance might suit Private Eye. I don't think the, that Epson would have taken anything out of it. He just got to flop out the back and run home. It was a quite a, a nice and you know solid win for him. I'm guessing that this is a uh, a very winnable race. The only thing, the query about it is these horses that run home that have to carry 57 and a half. I just, I don't know. I think they fly better when they are, uh, it had 51 last start. I get that they're all, um, they're all on similar level weights here, but I, yeah, I think it'll be flying home. I just, I think it'll just get there in the nick of time. It's not going to be one that puts a gap on them. But I think it might still just get there in the nick of time, Private Eye. Yeah, well, I have no doubt. I have no doubt that he can beat me. Um, I did look into. I, I backed it. I actually backed um, Private Eye when he he beat Apache Chase in that Queensland Guineas. Uh, but Apache Chase over raced outside the leader. Uh, looked the winner winner at the furlong. And he just got overrun late. And I, I think like 1,600 metres is a stretch for Apache Chase, um, but 1,500 metres is probably better suited. And I think he's come back at a bigger and stronger horses. And he beat the open horses last start and he carried 58 and a half. So uh, he comes back against the four-year-olds here. And there was $9 about him available at one stage today, but it's gone off a little bit. Uh, I, I still think there's a, a little bit of value, and I, I just, I reckon, I just reckon he gets the right run of the the three horses that I think are at the top. Right. I remember growing up, the Brisbane form was just there was a line going through it when Who? they come down. Me, I when they come down from Brizzy, the form was a line through. Now it's elevated. You got incentivized coming down off Brisbane form, Zaki coming down off Brisbane form. You've got Tafane coming down off Brisbane form. It's like. So bloody Brisbane's the new um, Adelaide to Melbourne during the uh, Melbourne Cup Week Carnival. Well, it used to be poo. I agree, but now. Um, hey, firstly, watch your language. Poo, uh, Exo Boom. <laughs> he's getting out to ridiculous odds, isn't he? Thirty-four dollars sports bet. Jeez, I think he can win. Exo Boom. Feel sick that I didn't take the eight dollars about it on the weekend. I know you tipped it in the premium. I did. I did. He was a good win too. Great tip there. Do you know what? Thank this you. is how cro- this is how crook I am. This is how crook I am. Wait for it. I back Cree Dearest. That's 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 pretty ordinary. I'm sick. Do you know what? I went out and just threw my wallet straight down the drain. I said, I don't deserve your money. If I'm gonna do stuff like that with my money, there's no use of me having it. Did he suck yeah. in again with the last 50 meters that he put in on Saturday? I thought Exo Boom was holding the the margin. It was just everything else was getting a bit slower, but it just does not want to participate. Well, I tell you what, Exo Boom will run the race at thirty four dollars. He's my roughie for the race. Is yeah, um, the, Maximal your roughie? 
Maxwell's my roughie, but do you know what? In this race, there, there'll be plenty of geniuses walking out of this race and going, I told you that I told you that a win 40 to one. I told you that a win 20 to one. Because there this is such an open race. What about sending aim around at $51? Well, I was just it about just, to say he's the silver eagle winner, and he's it's, I can see 41. It is not a horse uh, that is respected by the market, AIM. I remember one year going up for a uh, a two-year-old Magic Millions and launching into it at $4, and it, um, it was lame. Came back and won the three-year-old. I was there again. <laughs> didn't back it. I only went around about 50 to one that day. Yeah, it didn't back it. But, yeah, man, I, like, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. With, I'm thunderstruck. I think it's an afterthought. Got to travel up here, go the different direction. You know... Tough to line up, but I reckon uh, Private Eye will be running home past it. So, all right, well, I'm, right, I'm writing these down. Pat, Private Eye, and, and your Private Eye outside of Maximal. Uh, Maximal. Yep. And mine is uh, mine's Apache Chase and Exo Boom. Maximal. What I'm saying to the punters, don't be scared to go wide in this race. This is a, such an open field. It, yeah, it's quite embarrassing the prices of. Last start winner aim like fifty one dollars. It's beat Ellsberg and Count de Rupee, who are both remarkably shorter. There's plenty of tips going around for Ellsberg. Actually, I wish the best of luck to the Ellsberg camp. I know one of the owners is a massive leg up fan, listens to the podcast religiously, absolute legend. And uh, I've got a few mates that are going out with the crew on Saturday, so I wish them the best of luck. I'd love to see it run well. Oh. It was. The, did you just say um, you said Ellsberg, didn't you? Yeah, Ellsberg. Yeah. Well, he's the horse that I'd want to take out of the Silver Eagle because uh, he was good first up, then he was back in trip. He copped a little bit of that. Um, he lost a bit of momentum when yeah. uh, that horse broke down. Now, now he comes back up to fifteen hundred meters. He draws one, but uh, I'm not sure that I can get him to nine fifty and aim to forty one dollars. So. Um, that just looks a little bit of a discrepancy in the price. Uh, take it off, take it over. I've got to uh, turn the AC on, uh, off. Uh, so jump over to Melbourne. I'll be back in two seconds. Well, just before I jump over to Melbourne, early in the day in the uh, in the highway, we've got one of Woodheads who was uh, I can't remember who were the boys from the um, from the Tips and Sloops had tipped Woodhead this horse, but from very early on in its career, Ice in Vancouver. It's going around at $6 early in the day in Sydney. So it's definitely a horse that I'd be keeping a watch on and uh, probably might have a little five each way. So I think six or $7 at the moment. Also, great listener, great friend of the show. We've tipped into his horse Undeniable before. Uh, Matt Zamet in the Four Pillars uh, has highly desired running around. Race four, number six. It's currently, I think it's into $16. Wow, we yeah, I've got a ticket it? on him uh, at $101. $101. Wow. Well, Zamet was texting today saying that Bet365 still had $32 about it. Uh, yeah, it'll be putting his kids through school. They, they might even go to Kings or uh, Joey's if it if it gets up. But I wish you, used to have an, you used to have a share in this horse. I used to have a 10% share in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you need, to get, you need to get a ticket on it. Me and Woodhead. Oh, mate, I'll, I will definitely be backing it, but I'll back it just before the race. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a big futures better, so I don't mind. I'll just have the extra money on on the day when they run. I shouldn't be a futures better, but I, I do have a few futures plays. This one could pay off for me. Uh, so I'm just going there. Race four. Do you know how much it's for first? Three hundred and fifty thousand. And you probably got to split that though with the slut holder, so. You, Probably get 170,000. So, oh, yeah, 170. So, you need to back it to win about 17K. <laughs> Which can be done. Can be done quite easily. <laughs> you better be uh, loading all the bonus bets on it um, on Saturday so that you can, you don't feel too bad when he when he crosses the line first. Oh, mate, I wouldn't feel bad. I'd love Zamet, see Zamet and their family when they just absolutely worship horse racing. And you love to see supporters like that. And, You'd like to talk to me. I talk to him probably every second day about horse racing. So I reckon he's got a huge chance, this horse. His win at Goulburn was very good. Um, Showtime ladies come out and uh, I tipped her the other day on the Kensington track and she ran well. She found one better. Caesars Palace, he's an emergency in this race. He came out and he won at Hawkesbury. Uh, the times at Goulburn were good. He, this horse usually improved second up. 
draws perfect. I, I don't see how he doesn't run a race. It's it's just very hard to line up, but it's top prize money winner here. So, or second or third top prize money winner here. So yeah, it made it could be. Uh, well, he's well placed in a race like this. So only yeah, for benchmark, benchmark sixty eight. Yeah. He gave well the placed. track. Yeah, love it. All right, let's go to um, Melbourne. Uh, first race we're kicking off with. Uh, I'll introduce, and, and you can give me your tip. Uh, the TAB Empire Rose Stakes. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and upwards, standard weight for age, 1,600 metres at Flemington. What do you like? Oh, what about just hearing the derby, seeing the derby fields, you just, you know, Braithwaite must just be dusting off the vocal cords thinking, wow, I've got to belt out some horses. This is uh, this is the I, day. Of- I think he belted it out last week, didn't he? Well, he did. Does they no, did, they have, it. did they have crowd? They didn't have crowds though last week, did they? Was was he there? He usually does. But oh, mate, I've seen. I've been to probably five or six Derby days, and he just emerges from the crowd. It's just almost Jesus-like, and just belts out a, a quick horses, and then he just disappears, gone. I think that's how he makes into, his uh, his yearly wage every year. Into thin air for an entire year. It's a bit like Mariah Carey with that Christmas song. He just, he just comes out one song, don't sing any others. And then uh, disappears. But yeah, mate, this so exciting Derby Day, probably the best day of racing of the year. Uh, I think rivaled only by probably what, what do we say, Slipper Day? Well, I think I, I think this is. Uh, I, I do think that this is the the best meeting of the year. This is the best time. Even though I love yeah. Sydney racing, this is this is it. This is the this is the pinnacle, the Flemington Carnival. It just grabs yeah. the the imagination of the the whole Australian public and everybody's involved. Yeah, and I've got to say this race is uh, for me, Phillies and Mares race, Tafane's form is just so superior here to this field. It has form obviously behind on Thunderstruck, he's going around in the seven and a half million dollar race. It has form behind Incentivize, it has form behind Behemoth, it has form beating Najwinna Stradboat broke like this. She is top class. So Tafane for me here is a real standout. Probably one of the better bets of the day for me. And uh, probably going to be having something small on flying mascot. I just, I don't know where it came from last week, but it's um, it's four and a half length dem- demolition job of that field at the Valley and the Tessio Stakes was super impressive. And uh, I reckon if you could repeat something like that or improve off it, it'll be, yeah, super competitive in this field. But yeah, for me, Tafane well on top here and uh i think worth a good bet this weekend yeah well obviously um tofane she's class mayor there's been a bit of money for her early 360 to 330 was sports bet um she's the one to beat no doubt i, I definitely agree with you there uh, still saying 380 here. and she's drawn perfectly uh who, who's who's offering 380 i can't see that um unless it's yeah, with that 365 um, sorry, I don't have that 365 on my uh, my price list because uh, they're always outliers. But um, 330 with sports bet, 340 with tab, and still like 360 is available with play up. So I think she probably will start shorter than that. Um, even though I want to bet, a, oh, I don't want to bet against her, but I, I'm 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 back in the other horse that you mentioned, uh, flying mascot. I thought she was outstanding. The other day in that Tessio stakes. Um, she was heavily supported. She's, All the line of class through there, though. She, they've gone, the times on the day were outstanding. I, I know that this is a big step up in class and she, she meets these other mares at weight for age, but she is on an upward trajectory. Um, she's come out at Moving Valley on a deteriorating track. And they've gone three lengths faster than the Crystal Mile on the day. She's absolutely savaged the line. She's on seven-day backup. Market loves those sort of horses. Uh, draws perfectly. I like Black McDougal too. I think he's going to make a real fist of riding in um, Melbourne because he he was like he used to ride around Wagga and, and country New South Wales, and he was one of the best country riders in in Australia. And he's he's made the move up there, and he's he's really going to take it take it all these opportunities with two hands but 
Yeah, I, th- I think she can. I think she can win, Pat. Yeah, mate, I don't mind it. Like that, a bit like just I was looking back when I was doing the Coolmore form about why I tipped Home Affairs in the Everest. And so when when you have those the horses that you can't line up and the potential sort of outweighs the um, what do you say the market. When you go ten dollars, geez, this horse could be anything, and you're getting ten dollars about it. It's uh, you know, you got to have something on it at that. And I guess if you're going to make that your main bet, well, beauty. But yeah, for me, Tefane just has the runs on the board. But like like you said, at ten bucks, you can still bet this horse to win in the race. Well, I think um, yeah, I, like she's just up an, on an upward trajectory, and I think you next season to? this might be. I That'd think be she she's probably. She would have been the can. She she would have been hoping the Cantala too because she would have came in with no weight. But um, against the mares, she's she's going to be a top class mare. I'll go that far. Yeah. Well, how about a horse like uh, Sir Leo Miss starting at twenty three dollars in this and how many rows at the start of its prep? Would you have ever thought forty one dollars in a fillies and mares race? Like I thought this horse was going to go on and be a Group One star, but. It's a bit nuts, and there there could be you know there could be something that produces a, a left of field run here. But if Hungry Heart wins, I will I don't know smash a beer can on my head. I don't She's know. She's very track dependent. There's a couple that are really track dependent. Hungry Heart's really track dependent. She needs a firm deck. Um, I don't think Colette could win unless she gets a, a really wet surface. Uh, Mystic Journey. She she can probably win on either or. Um, but yeah, I, I think a, a couple of track dependent. Yeah, well, all right. I think we've pretty much covered it there, and uh, a bit of value too. Flying mascot, ten dollars. Flying mascot. Pretty happy, I, yeah, I'm pretty keen. I'm pretty keen on flying mascot. I think she'll run all the race. All right, I'll go to the next one. Race six, the Vic Derby. Three year old set weights. Group one, two. Oh, you're right there, mate. Yeah, two I just accidentally uh, I pulled the. the Power cord. I was getting excited. Jeez, you've had a fall. $2 million, absolute superstar race. This you've got forgot you at the top of the market. Love seeing this $4.60. Gunstock $4.40. Those two pretty much ruling the market, and the rest, you know, is $7 or longer. What have you got for us, Blackie? It's very hard to line up the uh the derby. Big field, three-year-olds, first time stepping up over 2,500 meters. Where do you go? I've got a couple of stupidly big futures bets in this race. I'm on yeah. uh, I'm on Clyde at three hundred to one. I'm not sure if he can win or not, but yeah, I'd, it's a hundred to one at the moment. So, yep, so I've got to uh, touch and touch of overs, and I'm on wow, Commander. I'm, gonna... I'm on Commander Harry at one hundred and fifty to one. So. <laughs> got a oh, touch sure. of overs on on both, but uh, I'm not sure that either can really win. Um, I don't have will, any more on. <laughs> I, I will say, I think Clyde will run a race. I know he just Mate, 100%. Won a, it a, will definitely run in a race. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say he will run a race. Like, he, he, these are the sort of races that, um, that you can have a horse bob up at huge odds because they're all very much so improving types. Um, and Clyde is an improving type. And I, I know that. Gary Portelli said that he was stirred up really badly at Scone. He's, he's come out and beat up on the older horses. He's carried 59 kilos. Uh, they've run fast time. This is a, a different test, but he draws six. He's going to run the trip. Um, I reckon he'll run in the, the top 10 for sure. I know he's 100 to 1, but you know, he might sneak into a place. I'm on him at 80 to 1 in the place, so hopefully he can do that for me. The horse that I have on top, I think he sets up a little bit better than Forgot You, who is on the seven-day backup from the Vars last week. He was good as well and only just got the better of my horse. Commander Harry, so hopefully he runs the race. But I think Gunstock's the one. Even though he's drawn 19, he really savaged the line. Um, He was really strong late there in that Norman Robinson uh, Flemington, 2,500 metres is going to suit him. I don't know where he gets to from 19, but uh, big field, driving nil, should be able to find some type of cover on him. And I, I just reckon he's going to eat up the big track and eat up the 2,500. And, yeah, he's a, he's a line chaser, this horse, and he's on an upward spiral. He just – he's a little bit earlier in his prep, and I just reckon – I reckon he's 
the top, the timing's a little bit better about him in regards to him and forgot you. Yeah, the three-year-old Colt is a bit wild. I thought, did it lay in a bit when it got to the front in that race against El Patroness? Yeah, well, he's still he's still quite green. He's only had about what, what five starts has he? So, yeah, but he did he did he was attacking the line. It wasn't like he was he he wasn't True. wanting to chase the line. He was he wanted to lay yeah. in, but he was still really attacking. That's why I went looking a bit wider because it was from the 19, but definitely thought Gunstock's a massive, massive chance in this. And uh, if it drew a better barrier, I reckon it probably would have been high twos, sort of low $3 mark Gunstock because uh, it's a lot to like about it. Yeah. And uh, like, that's what... I'm, I don't really take barrier position into consideration too much. Um, no, no I, not unless, unless they draw 19. <laughs> I know. But personally, I think that like the market sorts itself out anyway. So if you like something that's drawn 19 um, and you want to back it, the market sort of gives you that little bit of extra value so that you can back yeah. it and still come out on top if, you, if you're if you finding the right horses. Yeah. Well, for me, mate, chuchukaka. 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 What hey, a mate. run. Mate, what a run. Last start in that Geelong Classic. That was a bloody beauty. It was attacking the line, 2,200 metres, Kiwi horse, stepping up in distance. It done it before in Brizzy when it got out to 1,800 metres. I think this time he just nursed it through uh, Tony Pike. 1,400 metres first start, made it do absolutely nothing. Next start over 1,800 metres, just went around, then comes out and uh, just destroys that uh, Geelong Classic field. I can't believe I didn't see that coming. But... Um, yeah, I think this 2,500 metres at this point in the prep presents perfectly. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's probably over the odds at $9. So I think it might sell a lot shorter than this. Okay. J-Mac well, on board. J-Mac factor. J-Mac and T-Pike obviously don't get together a lot. But, uh, yeah, big show on this horse. And uh, for that reason, just for the reason that it's coming out of the classic as well, I'm going to have something on character at 40 to 1. Okay. I, uh, sorry? I said Okay. Yeah, I uh, just seeing that it run, <coughs> it did run second to uh, Chuchukaka in the John Classic. So I think it, 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 you know, wasn't shirking its task on the line over twenty two hundred meters. And I guess with these three year olds, it's about them getting the distance. I've been on many a favourite in this race that uh, that has run out to eighteen hundred meters or run a strong sixteen, and then out to eighteen and uh, just cannot get the well, a strong two thousand. Sorry, and cannot get the two and a half thousand meters. So. Yeah, I think it's going to be about covering the distance, and these two horses look like they're definitely going to do it. So, I'm taking, I'm going through the Geelong Classic. I'm doing a bit of old school form the uh, the Geelong Cup, the Melbourne Cup, the Geelong Classic to the Derby. Why not? Why not? Uh, and character SP shorter than Tutu Kaka last start too. So, thirty five to one does look a bit of overs. I agree. It did, and it made it, it. It didn't shirk the task. Like it still run through the line. So. Um, at 40 to 1, wow. I'm like, you know, I have $10 on it. It's still Why not? Get a good result. Okay, let's move on. Coolmore Stud Stakes, 1,200 metres. Group 1, set weight, three-year-olds. Uh, yeah, I'll go through the market for you too, if you like, Paterico. Um Give us a couple of favourites. Oh, a bit of money here for in the Congo. 550 into $4.20 today. Uh, Extreme Warrior went like a jet the other day at Caulfield, four forty into four dollars and twenty cents. Uh, where else is the money going? Paul Laley, he's out six fifty out to seven dollars today. Uh, Home Affairs, a little bit of money for him, twelve into eleven. What do you got on top, Paterico? Mate, I reckon the three year old bunch that we bagged the whole fucking season. I reckon Extreme Warrior might be the one out of the box. It's come through late in the season. It uh, it gets its chance here to put its stamp on this uh, this bunch of three year olds and go, you know, I am the twelve hundred meter horse. I'm the twelve hundred meter colt. You know, I'm the one that you you want in the breeding barn at the end of it with a group one next to its name that everyone wants the Coolmore Classic. So, uh, the Coolmore yeah, State. And talk three, about so, a line yeah. chaser. Didn't he chase the line at Caulfield? Absolutely savage. And I've got I've got big raps on Profiteer too. So, I think. 
he could be the one out of the box. The all the other ones we're all exposed on. Um, Paul Laley were exposed on home affairs. Jeez, it's going to be hard to bounce back off that super tough Everest run. In the Congos, had plenty of tough runs this prep, and I know it's uh, what nearly a, a month between runs for this. Down the straight, ingratiating, tough on the week back up. Where are we going? Artorias is 16, back to 12. It's, yeah, I, th- I think for um, for Extreme Warrior, it presents perfectly. This is obviously a race that the uh, Price and Kent Jr. stable have targeted with the horse, which is always good to see. And, um, yeah, I'm, I reckon it could be the one out of the box. And at $4.40, I, I think they're very good odds considering it, it was three and a half lengths to the second horse and they were three and a half lengths in front of the third horse. So, yeah, for me, uh, this is probably my second best bet of the day. Okay. Well, I have nothing else to add because I think he's a jet extreme warrior. Um, yeah. It's, uh, do you know what? It's just that risk you take down the straight, though, isn't it? Like, you are, uh, they've got to be good to win down that straight. Is my picture frozen for you? Is yours? No. Oh, yeah. You're frozen. I'm frozen. <laughs> but you, you can hear me. Voice. I hear your voice. <laughs> okay, so we're having some technical issues here, but I think Extreme Warrior is a jet. And uh, usually you can just refresh your picture. I'm like a re- miming. How do I refresh the picture? Uh, just go stop video and then you'll start video again. Oh, okay, hang on. Stop video. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. all right, hang on, we're back. We'll see you, got if we're so, back. you got so excited you froze. I just thought I'd talk you still. I'd frozen you. Yeah, I was just concentrating on what you had to say. Oh, mate, I'm I, back. I'm back. I read, I read a good one. Do you know what? This is why I don't believe the shit you read on the internet. Someone had written in, um, I think it might have been Scope, Punners Club or Pun Hub, um, Home Affairs has to be better the day, uh, ran fastest last sectionals in the Everest. It led, it, it was well, second around the turn. That, that, to nature's that's just completely if it not the, true. If it run the fastest last sectionals in the, uh, in the Everest, it would have won. So, well, uh, maybe, it but was. For, first comment, Savage the bloke, but, uh, they were good on yeah, them. Like, I guess that's don't, don't always believe what you read on, um, online i guess he, he's that bloke's read it wrong he's uh, accidentally looked at mass crusaders late sectionals and he's he's taken them for uh home affairs oh, i reckon a thousand percent oh, we've lined mass, up there we've lined up extreme warrior extreme warrior do you know what maybe that oh, i was gonna say maybe that could be the rollover bit, but whatever wants in the congo no no we are we're doing i'm i, I know my horse for the multi me you, too. Got to, you got to give me your horse for the multi. That's what it is. I know mine as well. I've already got it. Okay, good. Uh, is this the last of the group ones? Yes. Lucky the last. last this the is the ones. last race. The the last race of the group ones. The last race we'll be previewing tonight. Do you want to? You go. You go through it. You go first. You mate, the Kennedy Kentala over the mile group one. It's just a quality race. Two million dollars. I reckon it's quite a weak field for a two million dollar race. I know that's yeah. Sounds hard but you've got mr brightside who's the favorite mr brightside is not a group one two or three winner it's just a listed race winner four dollars 20 in the market i don't sort of see the uh the depth here that i think you should see in a two million dollar group one race but yeah blakey you throw it over to you what are you throwing on top here Yep, I'm on the seven-day backup. I think ice bath will be very hard to beat she was luckless in that Epton. Uh, then she come out and paneled him in the invitation. She was back in trip there. She was, uh, she went back. She was just a mile too good for them. Uh, Joy McNeil needs to find some cover from 16, but she eats up a mile. There's a little bit of rain forecast on Thursday and Friday. Might set up absolutely perfect for a Patrick. Very minimal rain, first time anti-clockwise. What did it take of that? Uh, I'm happy to gamble. Uh, I just think that Sydney form is... Uh, superior. Uh, I know well, they, they, they were similar runs, her and Riadini um, in the Epsom. On Sorry, not Riadini, Arameo. Uh, he draws better. Um, but yes. I just. That, that Arameo Epsom run far out. Did it just get a gap? He was hitting gaps like bloody uh, David Ferner. 
that was Alicia. That was Alicia too. So that would have been nice for Marlo and her to, to for her to grab a group one, but she'll get a chance. It, she wrote it perfect. Uh, bossy that, barrier that three. Was Rick, that was Ricky Stewart, David Ferner esque. The gaps that it was hitting. Cliffy Lions, Beaver Menzies esque. Oh, Cliffy and Beaver. Were there some tries scored there? The Beaver. Ice bath, obviously not with ice bath. That was a long ball to the winger. Do you know what? Damien Lane would have stood and applauded the ice bath ride. He would have. Actually, he, he said have. to me, he winked to me, he <laughs> yeah, goes, could, could have been wider. Could have been wider. <laughs> really... Is that wide enough, Damien? Could have been wider. Oh, he's maybe, maybe Macca didn't get to the right part of the track. He could have been a couple of lanes then, further out. Then he said to me, why do they build the straight so big <laughs> if you don't want us to go out there? Uh, well, well, he's right. What, what, what's he on, D-Lane, in this race? You got it right? Nah, he's suspended. Oh, it's good for you. For embarrassment. <laughs> no, no, no. He's suspended for... Uh, I, I'm, I, actually, I think he's suspended for whip use. I guess when you go wide, you've got a whip more. Yeah, but yeah, for me in this <laughs> you really got to get him going. For me in this race... <laughs> Ria Dini trolled <laughs> nice the other day. It uh, it was running behind the best of them. It's Epsom run. I think there's nothing to take away from that. Came, uh, who was it? Uh, was it Ashman that uh, drove it absolutely bonkers in the Epsom? Oh yeah, yep. There was a bit oh. of speed in that Epsom. The, he yeah. won the well, race at Newcastle. Ashman didn't he? Yeah. Well, from that it, it ran Ashman in the Epsom run twenty lengths off the winner and. Uh, uh, Ria Dini ran five lengths from the winner. So it actually stuck on and toughed it out from what was an absolutely ridiculous pace that set it up for private eye. But it is a tough horse that, you know, pushed very elegant to its limits, pushed Think It Over to its limits. Both horses, absolute stars. And uh, Ria Dini was only getting better this prep till that Epsom run where it was uh, absolutely flattened. I'm guessing they trialled it just to make sure that it hadn't gone off the boil and trialled beautifully at Ramwick and uh, I think there's no reason to turn off it and the market, you know, at, at $10 or well, $8.50, sorry, it's come in since the Savo is, uh, yeah, he's quite bullish on it. So Ria Dini for me. Yeah, and he was really firm in the market um, in that Epsom as well. So um, I have no knock. I think the Epsom forms the form for mine. I think one of the, the horses through the Epsom will probably more likely win this race. Um, well, yeah, there's mate. In saying that, there's no knock on Aramea, there's no knock on Cascadian. Both had great runs and you know were, were flashing home, but I guess you got to go with someone and like, even someone like Superstorm. But I think it might just be a little bit of a nonny Superstorm. I know it's one once this prep, but it gets up there, it just hasn't, uh, just hasn't had that, uh, the, the killing blow. But yeah, I, I thought if I was going to throw an outsider into this race, I'd probably throw Superstorm in. Okay. I don't really have an outsider start? for this race. Um, Aramea. We look? Mm, what price is he? He's eight. I think they made their all out. So we're the favorite at 420 down the bottom, Mr. Brightside. And Aramea I, is $9. I guess there's no knock on Mr. Brightside. It's, it gets him the lightweight, but it's best wins been at least in class. Like it, it's got to, it's got to step up. It's got to jump four rungs here to, uh, to be winning a race like this. I think he can. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have any type of knock on him. Um, any horse that can win six in a row um, and progress through their classes and, and win a Seymour Cup, Cup on the back end of it and and do it but like far he did. How, how many I, times can you get? How many times can you go to the well and how much improvement can there be when you go 16, 16, 16, 16, 1600? Yeah, I don't like, know. I don't know, but he, he's flying. He's bloody flying. Um, but I, I'd love. But the, yes, he's, love... he's found his price in the market. Surely. Yeah, I thought Tad Unders because when you're going mile, mile, mile every start, where like where where is your your big improvement going to come? Where I'd love to know the stats on uh, something running a, you know, going from listed class to Group One class when it's had five starts over the same distance prior. I'm just in the um, one prep. I'm having a look at his ratings right now, and he hasn't. In his ratings, every run this prep, he's he's progressed. So it, there's no sense of him going backward at all. 
Um, but he's he's a good horse. I, I'll, I'll be interested to see. I think he'll measure up. But I, I get it. I, but sometimes you, sometimes you hit the five clubs in a row, and it's, it's going to be a diamond or a heart or something. There has to else. be. There has to it be. Can't, it can't just five. One, two. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, so it's eighth up. They actually they did say it'd be better eighth up. <laughs> this is peak run. All right, let's do the rollover bet. You go first. The rollover bet, Tefane for me, mate. Tefane. All right. Well, I'm going to go through. Um, I'm going to see if I can put it on now. Woodhead has uh, Woodhead has kindly messaged through his um, his tip while sunning himself in the lovely lovely small town of Noosa. Up in uh, Queensland. Yep, and that's in the Congo, is it? In the Congo. Yep, we're not going with it. <laughs> okay, so mine. I, I'm we're gonna leaving go, these out. Uh, hang on one sec. Yeah, we're leaving it out. Oh, we're putting we're, it in. We're going all three, are we? Oh, I it was just mate, you I, and I. I'm happy to go just you and I, but you know. The big fella is not going to be happy. He's not going to be happy. You know, we'll, never, uh, we'll never hear the end of it if it uh, if in the Congo gets up. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going uh, – I'm the first race, actually. Um, first race at Flemington. I know you think that I'm going to go fangirl because I, I do like her. But I'm going to go pre-determine. Pre-determine. Um, is my roller – is my rollover bet. I think that Caulfield Guineas is a race that we can um, follow with confidence. He drew wide, went back to last. He hit the line hard, draws a better gate here. This is only his third career start. Flemington's going to suit him. I think he's going to be hard to beat. So predetermined for me. Um, and then I'm going to Flemington race five to Fane. And then I'm going Flemington race seven in the Congo. And we are going to get $51 for that. We taking it? We yeah, happy? the boys will be back. If we get that, the boys will be back. All right, on. It's on. All right, I'll send you that. Um, but that's about straight. it for the show, isn't it? We finished? Yeah, let's roll. Mate, right. we, we can only give the winners. Can I give the winners and bag so many people on here? All right. We'll be back on Sunday night, punters. Um, so don't forget about that. We're going to do a Melbourne Cup show uh, after Derby Day on Sunday. I want to give us a bit of time to do the form. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, Patrick, as always. Hopefully we, uh, hopefully we back a few winners Saturday and Sunday. We're not uh, waking up bagging everyone. We won't be bagging anyone. Sunday. I was kicking cans last Sunday. We won't be bagging <laughs> anyone. We'll, we'll have plenty of uh, tickets in the uh, Melbourne Cup. Uh You'll, you will have found a few winners. We will have got this multi up. 2,500 will have jumped in. We'll do a rollover bet on Tuesday. Ha, it's going to be good. I've got to say, I've got one for the cup. I've got one for the cup. Can't yeah, say anything. All right, let's wait for Sunday night. Have a good night. Get to bed, uh, and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Blaggy. Thanks, punters.